The United States is such a big place with so many attractions to see. How do you narrow it down when you've just got limited time on your visit? I get questions about this all the time. People planning their vacations to the USA saying, Chris, what should I see? What should I prioritize? And I recently got that question. I can't see this now. This question on my overhyped USA video about the most disappointing tourist attractions where Tristan said, I would love to see the flip side of this video, most awe-inspiring attractions in the USA. And so Tristan and everybody else planning a trip to the US, this video is for you. And so we're going to be counting down my top 20 favorite, most awe-inspiring tourist attractions. What do I mean by awe-inspiring? I mean places that aren't disappointing, places that people go to and they're like, this is amazing. This is great. For this list, I have excluded national parks. I've excluded beaches. I'm not going to be covering cities or states. I'm covering like neighborhoods, attractions, kind of small individual bite-sized places that you can go to as a destination. All right, we're going to be counting down from 20. So the 20th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the Freedom Trail in Boston. The, my Boston travel guide, one of my uh, most viewed travel guides outside of Vegas that I've done, and people really are interested to go to Boston to see the Freedom Trail. It's a great one-day thing to see in Boston. And what is the Freedom Trail? The Freedom Trail is a two and a half mile trail that connects a lot of the historic sites in Boston. Along the trail, there are these little markers in the ground, and there's this red line. You see this red line on the sidewalk here? That red line, you can follow it the whole two and a half miles. It's brick in some places, it's painted in others, but it's really easy to follow this walk. And uh, this walk, uh, it actually goes to Paul Revere's house, the guy who's famous for saying, the red coats are coming, the red coats are coming. That house was built in 1680, the year. It's the oldest house in Boston. Uh, also, Faneuil Hall, where there were many discussions about independence in the USA from Britain. Uh, it's now home to Quincy Market, which is a really neat food hall, good place to eat. Uh, and, you know, I think this is just a great way for a city to encourage and embrace tourism. This Freedom Trail didn't always exist, but it was conceived in 1951 by a local journalist, uh, and the Boston mayor put it into action in 1953. And, um, you know, that year, 40,000 people walking this trail annually, and now it is much more than that. So I think that's a great destination. I should point out this entire list, these are all places that I've personally been to, so they are indeed my favorites. No lemons on this list or things that I'm just talking about out of school. The 19th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the USS Midway Museum in San Diego, California, my hometown. San Diego, one of the biggest Navy towns in the United States of America, and it is home to this museum ship. Uh, the USS Midway, it was, this aircraft carrier was commissioned Eight days after the end of World War II, it was the largest ship in the world when it was built, and it was the first U.S. aircraft carrier that was too big to transit the Panama Canal. Uh, the ship operated for 47 years, including in the Vietnam War. It was the flagship in the Persian Gulf and in Operation Desert Storm. Decommissioned in 1992 and now a museum ship that you can walk around, go inside, see what the life of a sailor at sea on board this ship looks like. 5,000 people would live on this ship out to sea and it's really amazing just to go on board and experience it. Uh, and by the way, if you are coming to San Diego, Balboa Park is really cool too, but I said I'm not doing parks, so that's a subject for another video. Actually, I got a whole video on Balboa Park. If you want to see that, just search for Yellow Productions Balboa Park. The 18th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA. It's gonna take us to Texas now, to the city of San Antonio. San Antonio's most famous tourist attraction is the Alamo. And the Alamo is this fortress that was um, really pivotal in the war between the nation of Texas, when Texas was not a state and was an independent nation, and between Mexico. Uh, so a lot of people go to see the Alamo, but I think cooler than the Alamo is this place called the San Antonio Riverwalk. There's this 15 mile 
urban waterway that is one level below street level. And in San Antonio's downtown area, they've built it up with boats and restaurants and shops and street performers. And it's a really neat place to stroll around. There's trees, it's shaded. It's not anything that like when you think of Texas, you don't think of something like this. I mean, when I think of Texas, I think of um, hot sand. I think of people in like a Cadillacs with like um, bull horns on the front. And let me tell you, San Antonio is a really neat, pretty eclectic place to walk around in this river walk. Uh, I said I'm not doing cities, but you know, Austin is also a really neat city in Texas. Um, very kind of funky music scene and artsy. So kind of a cool city if you're looking to visit. By the way, if you are going to Texas, make sure to eat the barbecue because I think the barbecue in Texas is some of the best in the world. Particularly get the brisket, the beef brisket and you know, if you're if you're not watching your diet, if you go to a barbecue restaurant in Texas, ask for the brisket moist. That doesn't mean uh, that it's more wet, but the moist brisket is the fatty part of the brisket and really the most delicious, but because it's the fattiest, probably not for you if you're uh, counting your calories or watching your diet. The 17th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is <clears throat> the French Quarter in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans, Chris. Nolans. Nolans, as the locals call it. Um, this is the famous home of Mardi Gras in the USA, the, like, gigantic drinking party. But, um, as someone who doesn't drink a lot, it's not just a great place to go to drinking, but it has some of the most iconic architecture in the USA. Um, and the French Quarter is the oldest neighborhood in Nolens, founded in 1718. Uh, you know, it's so iconic that Disneyland, Walt Disney, built a whole themed land in Disneyland after the French Quarter in Nolens. Uh, also, I said, you know, it's home to Mardi Gras, the big uh, drinking festival, and uh, Bourbon Street is the main street through the French Quarter, home to tons of bars, and the French Quarter is also one of the few places in the USA where it is legal to carry a open alcoholic beverage wherever you may be going. Mm. Perfectly legal to carry tea as well too. Oh, and while you're there, speaking of food, we talked about food in Texas, definitely get the Cajun and Creole cuisines, which, you know, the United States of America is not known for a lot of original foods here. We borrow a lot of things from other places. You know, people say, this is as American as apple pie. Of course, American apple pie was not invented in the USA, um, but Cajun food, Creole food, invented in this region of the US. Get some gumbo, get some jambalaya, get some po' boy sandwiches. You won't go wrong with any of those. The 16th most awe-inspiring attraction in the USA, and I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger and stick me in the corner so you can uh, see me in this picture, is the Florida Keys in the south of Florida. Now, I said, well, I'm not really covering like big areas. Why is this on my list of most awe-inspiring? Because of the amazing highway that links all of these islands. The Florida Keys are a 120 mile long chain of tropical islands that extend from the south of the mainland part of Florida, then they're connected to the mainland of the USA via a series of bridges. The southern part of the Keys uh, is known as Key West. That's the one that's all the way at the end. And then if you look at this picture right above me, Key West is the southernmost point in the continental US and it's just 90 miles from Cuba. Uh, and the longest bridge there uh, in the roads that you see up there, the longest bridge over the ocean is like um, seven miles long. It's really impressive. These bridges were originally constructed in the uh, early part of the 1900s in the 1910s for a railroad to go across all these islands. But then in the 1930s, after World War I, the US government put a ton of veterans to work with basically war relief funds to build this highway. Just another one of those great engineering achievements. And if you like road trips, this is a pretty iconic one too. Uh, and hey, if you wanna go visit you know, Donald Trump's house, you'll find uh, his house Mar-a-Lago there along those Florida Keys. Uh, in the chat, I see cottage full of 
love saying the Florida Keys are on my bucket list. They're really neat. And then if you make it all the way down to Key West, that's a great place to spend a night at a hotel there. There's a lot of neat hotels and there's a place in Key West called Mallory Square that they have this big like street performer festival every night for the sunset. And there's a street performer uh, out there on the weekends who uh, he's, oh, what's his name? Something the Catman. I forget his first name, um, but he's a, originally a French guy who has all these trained cats that do acrobatics. Key West is a really, like, really different place from the rest of the USA just based on its remote location. Uh, and Phil says, I got a bridge phobia. I won't be making that drive. Well, you can fly to Key West, too, if you don't want to go on the bridges. The 15th most awe-inspiring tourist destination in the USA, also in Florida here, is South Beach in Miami. Now, Chris, you said you're not mentioning beaches, not for the beach, <laughs> but for all of the neighborhoods, for the lifeguard towers. Why do I say not the beach? You know, I'm from Southern California. Uh, I'm biased. I think the beaches in Hawaii are better than the beaches in Florida. I like the Southern California beaches. Our beaches are the water's cold here. The water's nice and warm there in South Beach. Um, but if we just talk about the neighborhood itself, this is a place that millions of visitors flock to every year. And Miami Beach itself is on this nine mile long island, but the southern tip, South Beach, this is where all the life is. And it's the part of Miami that has been made famous in movies. Scarface in particular has a lot of scenes that take place in South Beach. Uh, also, uh, really well known for its well-preserved pastel-colored Art Deco architecture. A lot of outdoor cafes that you can sit and just admire all the stuff that's going on. Oh, and then if you look in this picture, the lifeguard towers, you know, one of the earliest videos I did on this channel was a feature of just all the iconic lifeguard towers. And if you look in those pictures, every one of them is like a different color and a neat kind of Art Deco thing. So just a pretty fun place and a lot of great hotels with high rises there that are right in South Beach. The 14th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is Pike's Place Market in Seattle, Washington, going all the way over to the other side of the country from Florida. Uh, this farmer's market opened in 1907, so it's been open for over 100 years. It is one of the oldest continuously operated farmer's markets in the USA. 10 million people visit this market annually. It is built on the edge of a steep, steep cliff, which makes a really unique market to go around because there's a lot of lower levels that go down. The most famous stall in this market is the Pike Place Fish Market, where if you order a fish, the person takes it out of the um, like refrigerator with all the ice in it and then they th literally throw it to someone behind the counter that then cuts it or fillets it for you and so it's kind of known as the home of the flying fish. But even more famous at Pike's Place Farmer's Market is the original Starbucks store. If you are a fan of coffee, when you go to Seattle, then you need to make a pilgrimage to the Pike's Place uh, Market to visit that original Starbucks. It actually turns out the original Starbucks was in a different location, like a block away, and then they moved here, but it's still the original store when they were original stores. Uh, if you are a Starbucks fan, Starbucks, uh, a little further away, like a mile away in Seattle, has a Starbucks Reserve Roastery, which is like one of their like flagship stores that's super neat, has really tasty drinks and pastries and uh, pizza and things like that. So definitely check out, if you're a Starbucks fan, the original store here, and then also the Reserve Roastery up the hill. Uh, and if you like street performers, I talked about street performers in Key West, uh, this farmer's market, particularly known for their buskers, their street performers, too. Uh, Kathy says, yeah, the line was too long at Starbucks. Uh, you know what? Because it's the original Starbucks, it can have long lines. Alex says, Ivar's in Seattle is delicious for their seafood and their clam chowder. Kai says, I really like the Seattle Public Library. And Kathy says, we loved watching <laughs> the the uh, flying fish. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, so those are pretty good. All right. Uh, and uh, Dennis corrects me and says it is Pike 
place market and not pikes. All right, thank you for the correction. Oh, and then um, if you watch my Seattle travel guide, like I actually take you through this market and we also go check out the bubblegum wall. There's this wall in the bottom of this farmer's market that literally people chew gum and take it and put it on the wall. And some people might say it's gross, which it kind of is, but it's pretty unique because how many out, like it's a long alley that's just covered in bubble gum and they got to scrape it off all the time because people keep putting more bubble gum in it. And uh, yeah, so if you like really wild and wacky attractions, check out the bubble gum wall there too. All right. The 13th most awe-inspiring tourist destination. Let's go to Chicago, to the middle of the country now, off the Great Lakes, on one of the Great Lakes, uh, on Lake Michigan in particular, is the Navy Pier in Chicago. Uh, this pier is part shopping mall, part amusement park. You can see in the big picture right here, they've got a Ferris wheel on it. They've got one of those like swing things. But one of my favorite things in Chicago is this um, mirrored, they call it a beam. It's like cloud, cloud gate or something like that is the official name of this piece of art but everybody calls it the bean because it looks like a mirrored bean. And it's just like one of those neat uh, public art things that like actually, sometimes you look at public art and you're like, why did the city spend money on this? But this is one public art piece that I like, whenever I go there, I just spend like 30 minutes around this thing, like looking up at it in my reflection and going underneath it and going around it. And so uh, those are a couple really worthwhile spots to check out in Chicago. And the city is just kind of neat to wander around and visit too. The 12th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA, and this is one of OC Girl's favorites because she is really into space, is the Kennedy Space Center. This is back in Florida, and uh, this complex, since 1968, has been NASA's primary launch center for human space flight. So when the US puts humans up in space, they go out of Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There's an impressive museum that you can go. So there's like the operational NASA complex, but then there's the kind of tourist visitor center. You gotta pay admission to go into it. And in addition to just the museum part, you can also uh, pay more money to take guided tours of the actual NASA complex which is pretty neat. Which brings us to number 11, the 11th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction, also another space attraction, is the Johnson Space Center in Houston. This is another big NASA facility. Now, this space facility in Houston was made famous in 1969 by Neil Armstrong when he said from the surface of the moon, Houston, the eagle has landed. And so the way NASA kind of divides and conquers on it, it's slightly odd that the launch is in Florida, but then mission control is in Houston. And that's just how NASA rolls. Uh, but Houston is also to mission control. You can actually take tours of mission control. You can go in that room that you've seen in the movies that's been made famous. Uh, it is where human spaceflight training, research, and flight control are conducted. It is one of Houston's top tourist attractions, uh, and in particular, it is the top tourist attraction in Houston for international visitors. 1.2 million people uh, visit annually. Oh, and uh, speaking of the Kennedy Space Center, uh, Kathy says, I've been to it in 2014. It was amazing. Uh, Points Traveler says, Space Coast. Indeed, Kathy says, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Indeed, we do. Uh, and Avi agrees uh, that I've been to the Johnson Space Center. It was amazing. And Scott says, it's really cool that you can take a tram tour, which takes you to the mission control room where they monitored the first moon landing in 1969. It really is. Like, it's just, it's super neat to be in that room. And of course, they, they let you go in that room because they have a newer room that they use to actually control the ones today. Um, but it's neat to be in that place. And you can see the consoles that they had, and then you can see like the observation room and just all that stuff that's been made famous in uh, movies and TV shows and reports, like you can be there. Uh, and Paint Killer agrees that uh, they just visited Kennedy Space Center two weeks ago, and it was great. Fabulous. The 10th most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA, 
I gotta have one snow destination. Snow destination in here is Vail. Vail is the largest ski resort in the USA. It is in the state of Colorado, which is kind of on the west coast, but in the center. And Vail, what's really neat, and I'm not just naming this about the town, but they have this really cool village in Vail that is a Bavarian-themed village that you can see by looking at this architecture. I'll make it a little bigger for just a moment. You can see the slopes up there in the back. And what I love about going to Vail is the village itself is car free. So you go to Vail, you park your car in a parking garage or at the hotel, and then you don't use your car to get around the town. There's just all these pedestrian walkways and you go, well, Chris, that might be a drag when it's snowing. Well, in Vail, they've actually uh, have hot water pipes that run underneath the sidewalks. And so the sidewalks are heated, which means that the snow melts off of them, the ice melts off of them. And so if you're afraid about going to a snow destination because you're afraid of like slipping and falling because of ice, you don't have that problem at all in the center of Vail because of this really innovative um, heating infrastructure on the sidewalks. Also, much like Disneyland, they have this whole system to like keep their trash like underground and so you don't see like really trash moving around. It's just a really neat town. Uh, it is it is expensive though. I will say the hotels in Vail are probably some of the most expensive of any of the ski destinations in the US. Uh, also, there's a famous ski resort nearby Vail Aspen, home to some famous film festivals. And I think uh, another couple cool snow destinations, if you're looking for snow destinations, Salt Lake City in Utah has a Park City, Utah, and there's a couple neat ski resorts around there. And then if you're in California, just uh, outside of the Bay Area, Lake Tahoe has some cool ski areas too. But back here on Vail, what we really like is even in the winter, if you don't ski or you don't snowboard, you can still take the uh, lifts up to Mid Vail, which is an elevation like, over 10,000 feet and they've got snow tubing up there and they got restaurants up there and so even if you don't ski and snowboard it's still a great place to go uh, in winter too. Uh, and uh, on the note of these other ski destinations Alex agrees Park City in Utah is gorgeous it is. Points Traveler agrees Lake Tahoe is busy too and Raman Goaded says Vail is definitely beautiful and it feels like the Alps in Europe. I think yes Vail is indeed the most European feeling town in the USA. Uh, maybe, I mean, another really cool European town in the US is this town of Solvang in California. It's like uh, north of Los Angeles and it's a whole like, um, like Danish or Dutch town. I mean, it's like, it's a European town that has like windmills and all these bakeries. It is pretty neat. Uh, Jeff says, I rented a bike in Vail and rode the bike path there. Amazing bike ride. Jeff, I assume that was not in the winter, probably in the summer, summer, right? Um, but yeah, a lot of these ski destinations turn into cool like mountain biking destinations in the summer as well. So a lot of bicycle rentals. Uh, James says, Chris, what are you drinking today? Today, I am drinking a Ito N Golden Oolong Tea. Hmm. Tasty and thirst quenching. All right, the ninth most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is Waikiki. Chris, you said you weren't doing beaches, not for the beach. And I'll talk about the beach in the moment because actually Waikiki Beach made my list of most disappointing tourist attractions in the USA. So I'll talk about why it's disappointing first and then I'll talk about why I think it's awe-inspiring at the same time. The beach itself, if you look at it, kind of narrow, kind of small, and full of people. And so people who are going to Hawaii are often disappointed by the beach in Waikiki because it's not what they imagined as a Hawaiian beach that's like a remote island with nobody on it. They have the beach themselves. No, it's you and 10,000 of your closest friends on the beach in Waikiki. But what is really neat about Waikiki as a place, much like Miami Beach is an island, Waikiki is sort of this man-made peninsula-ish thing and the hotels there and the infrastructure that's built up along Waikiki on the main street really feels like the Las Vegas Strip has come to the beach. I mean, there are these massive hotels, these classic hotels. This picture I took from the um, 
uh, Moana, uh, the Surfrider, uh, the Moana Surfrider Hotel, which is now a um, Westin. And what's cool about this hotel, it's like the first hotel that was built in Waikiki. <coughs> it's this classic hotel that people used to come on ocean liners with big trunks that they would put in the hallway. It is a super popular place for weddings. It is home to the first elevator in Hawaii. It is home to like the first telephone in Hawaii. It's a pretty cool place and you can easily take a Hawaiian vacation and just spend an entire week in Waikiki. There's that much to do. And by the way, there's this kind of like mountain in the back that's Diamond Head. That's the most popular hike in uh, on Oahu, uh, but it's so popular you do have to make a reservation if you're going to go. Now, if you want the experience of like Hawaiian paradise, um, don't stay in Waikiki. Uh, I'd encourage you to stay at the North Shore. There's like the Turtle Bay Resort, or you can stay over in Ko'olina. That's where the Aulani Hotel is. There's also some Marriott Vacation Clubs that are over there. Um, those are a couple of places that you can go to really get away from the crowds that are in Waikiki. Uh, some comments in the chat about which islands are better. Rich says Maui is the best. Uh, Avi says you should go to the Polynesian Cultural Center. The Polynesian Cultural Center has what I consider to be the best nighttime show in Hawaii. They have a luau, but they have this nighttime show that's a dance and fire dancing. I really recommend it. Uh, Cottage Full of Loves likes Kauai the best. We can have a lot of arguments about which island is the best, but and then, honestly, I think there's no best island for everyone. People have different likes. If you like city life and you like food, Oahu's the place you want to go. If you want to go to the quintessential honeymoon destination, it's Maui. And if you want to get away from the crowds, rugged, wild, then it's Kauai. And if you want to see active volcanoes, it's the big island because there's no other place in the U.S. that you're going to see an uh, active volcano other than the big island, which by the way, the big island is also the island of Hawaii. That's the name of that island, Hawaii, but many people call it the big island. Uh, and Points Traveler says Southwest has some of the best rates in Hawaii. And Alex starts to sing the in the tiki 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 room, which is a great song for sure. Uh, and Kathy says they're going to Hawaii and staying at the Aulani in June. Kathy, I look forward to your report from the Aulani Hotel. Yeah, and Funalicious says Maui's amazing, but it's hard to see driving at night. That is definitely a problem in Maui and Kauai. When it gets dark, those places don't have a lot of lights. And so if you're on those two islands, uh, it's great to be back at your hotel once dark hits or at least near this hotel. Yeah, and Wu Tai says, hey, if you're enjoying this video, um, please share it. Like click the share button, share it with your friends. Uh, if you don't do that, hit the like button because every time you like it, uh, a piece of premium bamboo goes to feed the Yellow Productions crew and it lets YouTube know you're enjoying the stream so that YouTube can share it with other people. The eighth most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the Santa Monica Pier. The Santa Monica Pier in Santa Monica, California. This is uh, near Los Angeles. It's in Los Angeles County, but Santa Monica turns out to be its own city, not part of the city of Los Angeles. It is this iconic pier that has an amusement park over the Pacific Ocean. Um, the only uh, solar powered Ferris wheel on a pier <coughs> and it has a roller coaster on this pier too. Pretty cool. It's at the end of the iconic Route 66 that you would take from Chicago all the way here to the West Coast. Uh, it's free to walk on the pier. A lot of street performers here too. Um, great views. And this is also the beach that uh, Baywatch was set on. I mean, it's actually technically just a little bit to the north, but it's like a super wide sandy beach and just a really fun place to go. Santa Monica also has a neat downtown area called the Third Street Promenade that's just up the hill from this pier. Uh, and so if you want to see that or you want to see um, Santa Monica's Main Street, I've got walking tours of all those. Just search for Yellow Production Santa Monica to dive into my whole Santa Monica series. Just next to Santa Monica, and this is number seven, is the Venice Beach Boardwalk. This is probably going to be my most controversial attraction in this video because Venice Beach people have a love 
hate relationship with. Uh, and so what I think, and by the way, again, I'm not talking about the beach. I'm not talking about to go to Venice as like to go lie on the sand. I'm talking about Venice Beach to visit the boardwalk and to visit Abbot Kinney Boulevard. And I'm gonna talk you through why you wanna go to those two places. But the Venice Beach boardwalk, more people visit the Venice Beach boardwalk annually than they do Disneyland. Is that crazy? That's crazy. Um, but the Venice Beach Boardwalk is basically like an artsy swap meet every day with tons of people selling art, street performers. Uh, it's a really crazy place. It is home to Muscle Beach where Arnold Schwarzenegger was famously getting buff. The original Muscle Beach was actually in Santa Monica, the Santa Monica Pier, but it moved to Venice Beach. These two places are just right next to each other so you can cover both of them at the same time. I say this is controversial because Venice Beach uh, over the last few years has had a significant homeless problem, which is unfortunate. Um, LA is trying to clean it up. They're not completely succeeding, but Venice Beach is one of those iconic attractions that I think is worth a visit in the daytime. Uh, and it's also worthwhile to go down Abbott Kinney Boulevard. Abbott Kinney Boulevard is the um, main street for all the high-end shops in Venice. So that's where all the celebrities and the stars are gonna eat and hang out. And then finally, it's called Venice because this neighborhood was actually modeled after Venice, Italy. And Abbot Kinney, who was the creator of this neighborhood, that's why there's a street named after him, he, uh, and if you just look at the architecture here, right, that it looked, these look like Italian buildings. He wanted this to be an Italian town complete with canals, most of them have been filled in to turn into roads, but there are still some of the original canals remaining based on his vision of Venice, Italy in California. Uh, and Phil says it is better now uh, after they cleared out the homeless crowd. Thank you for that report, Phil. And then Emmett says there's nothing scarier than buff bums. Indeed, bums that can work out. Uh, and Paintkiller says, I can confirm this choice is a controversial one. LA has more awe-inspiring places to visit than Venice. Well, Pink Killer, indeed, uh, but I got more to go from LA, so here we go. Uh, Universal Studios Hollywood, sixth most awe-inspiring attraction. Uh, there are a couple of Universal Studios theme parks in the US. There's this one, the original one of Hollywood, and then there's a bigger one in Orlando. Now, which one do you wanna go to? Well, the one in Orlando is bigger, it's more grand. The rides are better in Orlando. Universal Studios Hollywood is the only one that has the studio tour that you actually take this tram through a whole bunch of operational movie studios and there's a ton of Hollywood history there. The reason you go to Universal Studios is to do the studio tour, number one, and then do all the rides, number two. The reason you go to Universal Studios Orlando is to ride all the rides. I will point out that Super Nintendo Land or Nintendo Land or Nintendo World or whatever they're calling it uh, is opening at Universal Studios Hollywood uh, later on in February. I'm looking forward to that. Speaking of more attractions in Los Angeles, they we're now on the number five is Disneyland. Yes, and there's two big Disney parks in the US. The original Disneyland in Anaheim, California, just south of Los Angeles and Disney World in Orlando, Florida. Which one should you go to? If you wanna to go to the most iconic magical park, it's the original Disneyland in Anaheim near just south of Los Angeles because this is where the magic of Disney all started. If you, uh, and it's good for like a two or three day visit. Now, if you want to immerse yourself in everything Disney, if you're a true Disney file, then go to Orlando and spend a week there and stay on the property and just be immersed in Mickey for a whole week. There's that much stuff to do there. Uh, and by the way, if you wanna dive more into this, I've got um, travel guides on Disneyland, Disney World, walking tours of all these places. And so we could dive into them later, but you know what, they're expensive, but I mean, people, that's why lots of people go there because it's, they are awe inspiring places. Points Traveler says this is gonna be a new Universal Park in Frisco. Texas. Uh, all right, I'll be interesting to go to with a new Universal Park. And Ramen Goaded says, Disneyland and Universal are the best theme parks to see in the LA metropolitan area. I agree. The Los Angeles metropolitan area has a lot of theme parks. Like LA and Orlando are like the theme park capitals of the USA. Maybe Texas comes in like third. Look, there's a lot of theme parks around the country, but LA and Orlando, or you can spend like a couple weeks just visiting all of the theme 
parks. Uh, now, Junie points out this video is not about Tokyo, but I agree. If you ask me, Chris, what is your favorite Disney theme park? My favorite Disney theme park is definitely Tokyo Disney Sea. It is a unique theme park, and it was originally conceived as the second Disney theme park to open in California. That's right. The plans for this park originally were built in California in Long Beach, um, but uh, you know it never worked out between Disney and the city of Long Beach to build this park. Tokyo said, "Heck, we'll build it," uh, and it's super cool and super awesome. I got a whole video on that, something about Tokyo, so you can uh, watch. Search for Tokyo Disney Sea Yellow Productions if you want to dive into that one. The fourth most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the island of Manhattan. I said I'm not doing cities, and so this isn't New York City, this is Manhattan. And here, there's a cool picture, so let's make this one a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, in Manhattan, I mean, it is home to more high-rises, per square mile than any other place in the USA. The most valuable real estate per square foot. Uh, it is amazing how dense this place is and the whole um, island just feels like, like it, you're just like, this place? You've seen it in movies. It's one of those places that just a sense of awe and wonder goes over people when they visit. Also a sense of honking horns and feeling of taxis that are gonna run you over and maybe subways that can be a little sketchy at night. But there's great attractions in Manhattan or around Manhattan. The Statue of Liberty, you can see a Broadway show, you can climb the Empire State Building, although there's really better observatories than the Empire State Building. I think um, the Empire State Building at Rockefeller the observatory at Rockefeller Center is better, uh, and I also think the observatory at the uh, New World Trade Center is better too. Um, so uh, you only do the Empire State Building if you want to do the classic one, but it has the longest line, so do some other ones. Uh, Stroll Central Park, which uh, was also in my list of most disappointing tourist attractions because I think a lot of people go to Central Park, me included, and are like, it's a park. Why are so many people in love with this park? And I know New Yorkers will uh, flame me for that, be like, Chris, you just don't understand. But, you know, as someone who's been to a lot of parks, lives in a place with a lot of parks, San Diego has Balboa Park. I don't understand the love for Central Park as much. Although I do often visit it when I go to New York City. Uh, you can window shop on Fifth Avenue, or you can stagger around the many museums that are, are in New York City. Pink Killer says, I can confirm NYC is great. Seeing all those skyscrapers is definitely awe-inspiring, especially if you come from somewhere without skyscrapers. Uh, and Melissa agrees, Top of the Rock is the best. What's neat about the Top of the Rock Observatory is it's open air. Uh, so you can like get outside and really feel how tall you are, and you can see the Empire State Building. Uh, Paint Killer disagrees and says, I love the Empire State Building, didn't like Top of the Rock, and enjoyed the One World Observatory. All right, Paint Killer, why? Why did you love the Empire State Building and didn't like Top of the Rock? Uh, I'm curious. Jay says, do I ever travel to Canada? For sure, I've been to Vancouver twice in the last two years. If you haven't seen my Vancouver series, my Whistler series, Victoria, uh, go check it out. Just type in Yellow Productions Canada and you will find it. Yes, Phil says, hey, when you're in Manhattan, you may well go to Central Park. Uh, Jeff says, walking the Brooklyn Bridge is iconic. Brooklyn Bridge is neat. So is the High Line. The High Line is this neat, um, it used to be an elevated railroad track through the city that they've turned into a really neat park. They're just like these super unique things that are in Manhattan that are nowhere else. And the pizza is amazing too. All right. The third most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the National Mall in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. The United States of America has 50 states and then the District of Columbia. We call it Washington, D.C. Its official name is the District of Columbia. It is the nation's capital. It is not one of the 50 states. Uh, it's like this whole like bizarre thing where it was carved out between Virginia and Maryland, this special zone, the district. Uh, and this part that you see here in this picture, this is the part known as the National Mall. There's no shopping there. It's not a shopping mall, but the National Mall is what connects 
the Capitol building that you see at the very end of this picture um, to the Washington Monument, which you don't see in this picture, which is the really tall, pointy, thin thing, to the White House, to the um, reflecting pool, to the uh, Lincoln Memorial. And it's just a cool place to walk around. You can spend days seeing all the things that there are along the National Mall. Many people think of going to see the White House. Okay, you're in Washington, D.C. You need to go see the White House. But you get there and you're like, yep, that is the White House with a big fence in front of it. You can take tours of the White House, but you need to arrange those like super far in advance, like with like a Congress person's office. It's really hard to get in. And then when you do get in, you only get to go into a really small part of the White House. And I've I personally was underwhelmed with the White House tour. I think the Capitol building tour is way better and you can even get tickets to go into um, sessions in the House of Representatives or in Congress if you're there at the right time. So definitely check out the Capitol building tours. And then flanking the National Mall are all of the Smithsonian museums, which are the US federal government um, official museums, the Air and Space Museum, the National History Museum, and uh, Alex Jossie in the chat at the beginning of this live stream said, Chris, you need to mention the National Archives because that's where you can go and see the original Declaration of Independence. One of my favorite, um, one of my favorite museums in DC is at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing where you can actually see them print the money. You can see them print $100 bills there at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Free admission to all of the Smithsonian's, which is just super amazing. Day trips from DC that are cool to check out. You can visit uh, George Washington's house. That's pretty neat. You can take tours of George Washington's house, the first president of the USA uh, and couple hours away driving, you can visit Thomas Jefferson's house, which is a pretty neat uh, tour and experience to go to learn about the history of this country. Uh, Avi says the FBI building is fun, uh, I think, to see and look at because we've all seen a lot of movies. I don't think you can take any tours or go into the FBI building. Paint Killer says I miss the museum. I guess I didn't know it closed. Um, that's disappointing. Carlos has a neat place in D.C. is Georgetown. Georgetown is like D.C.'s upscale uh, neighborhood, which uh, is pretty nice too. Jonathan says D.C. is on my bucket list. Mrs. Clay says, isn't there a spy museum in D.C.? There sure is. Uh, and Raman Goda says, I felt safer in D.C. more than New York City. I would agree with that completely. I spent a year living in um, Arlington, Virginia, which is just across the river from Washington, D.C., and uh, as I, I've not lived in New York City, but I spent a fair bit of time there, and I definitely, I feel pretty safe walking around Washington, D.C. Um, at all hours of the night, uh, not so much in New York City. Uh, and Avi said, when I went in 1998, you could tour the FBI building. All right, neat. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Danielle says, yeah, maybe uh, pre-9-11, pre um, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and Jonathan says it's a long time watcher, first time commenter. All right, thanks for the comment, Jonathan. All right, we're going down to the home stretch here. Let's go to number two. The second most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the Golden Gate Bridge in foggy San Francisco. This bridge, one of the most iconic bridges in the entire world. You show people this picture and, and you go like, what is this? And you know, almost universally people are like, that is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, when it was built in 1937, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. It's become an internationally recognized symbol of the USA and San Francisco and California. Why is it this red orange color anyway? Why is it a Golden Gate Bridge? Um, it was specifically chosen to make the bridge more visible through the thick fog that is regularly in San Francisco. If, if you've come to San Francisco to try to see this bridge or to walk across this bridge, you probably don't see this view. You probably see a video, a picture of it enveloped in a, a pea soup thick fog, such as the weather often in San Francisco. The, I like to say the bridge is very shy, um, but if you're lucky, you'll get a day like this where it's really sunny. Uh, what's neat, you can walk across the bridge. There's a like a sidewalk along the side of it. You can ride a bike across the bridge uh, and then uh, nearby 
in the San Francisco Bay is Alcatraz, which is the famous prison that was built on this island in the middle of San Francisco Bay. And if you're in San Francisco, it's really worthwhile to check out San Francisco's Chinatown, which is the largest Chinatown in the U.S. Uh, and where the modern day fortune cookie was invented. Um, Michael says, my recent San Francisco video uh, made him second thoughts about going there, people crapping on the streets. You know, San Francisco really has gone downhill over the years. My goal of that video was not to discourage you from going, but my goal from that video was just to make you aware of the issues that are in San Francisco today. It is the car break-in capital of the USA. More car break-ins in San Francisco than any other city in the US. Uh, and yes, the San Francisco has a huge homeless problem. I think it's worse in San Francisco than in Los Angeles. Uh, and so those are just things you need to be mindful of as you set foot into that city. Uh, and Kimberly says, you also need to bring a jacket and you need to bring long pants. You do because San Francisco gets really quite cold when that fog rolls in. Um, and uh, Raman Godin says that's why uh, they hate San Francisco. Uh, and the only thing they like about it is the Golden Gate Bridge, which is why that is what made this list. All right, let's go on to number one. The number one most awe-inspiring tourist attraction in the USA is the Las Vegas Strip. It had to be Las Vegas here on Yellow Productions, right? Uh, home to, I mean, amazing things, home to the Bellagio Fountains, this man-made lake with these amazing fountains that they just, there's a show every 15 minutes for what? For free. Do you pay to see it? No. This is a hotel just puts up this show every night. There's a volcano that erupts every hour on this trip. That's a, there's an Eiffel Tower. I mean, there is so much amazing stuff that is only on the Las Vegas Strip that you won't see anywhere else. People go there whether they like it or not, they're still like, it is a mate, because they might not like it, because they don't like gambling, and they don't like the lights, or they don't like the showgirls, but universally, people can be like, wow, this is an amazing place, particularly because it's in the middle of the desert. I mean, there is no reason you'd want to go to this place, this, like, this part of the country if Las Vegas, like, wasn't there. So it's just amazing that this thing was created there all of its own, not for, like, government interest. I mean, maybe the mafia created it, or maybe the Mormons, or... You know, maybe MBAs run it now, uh, but it is really cool. Rebecca points out and says, good choice for number one. Remy says, are most of the hotels still smoke-filled? You know, uh, in downtown, they're really smoke-filled, but on the Strip, I feel like the air conditioning is pretty good, and if you really don't like smoke, then go to the Park MGM because it's completely no smoking. But Resorts World, which is the newest hotel on the Strip, you can smoke in it, but it doesn't... You don't smell it, really, when you walk through the casino. Uh, and Carlos says, I thought the Pinball Museum in Vegas was going to be your number one. I love the Pinball Museum in Vegas, so just consider it part of the Las Vegas Strip. Now, before I head to Q&A, uh, this was my list of 20 things that I think are the most awe-inspiring based on Chris's opinion and things I hear from all of y'all about what you like and what you're uh, disappointed with and what you're not disappointed with. But what I did want to share with you before I take Q&A is I wanted to share with you the official list of um, tourism statistics in the U.S. about what the top attractions are just based on popularity alone. And so if we take a look at this, and I know this is a little bit of an eye chart, I'm going to run through it just super quick so you got it in your head. The uh, visitors annually right here, we've got Times Square 50 million visitors annually. Central Park, 42 million. Las Vegas Strip, 42 million. Union Station in Washington, D.C., 40 million visitors to a train station. I don't understand why 40 million people go to a train station. Probably because it's, the, it's got a food court in it and it's the only place to eat when people go to the National Mall. And I think they don't record, well, they do record the National Mall at 32 million. And so I don't understand how more people go to Union Station than go to the National Mall, which is two down. The Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota, I have not been there yet, but 40 million people visit that actual shopping mall. Millennial Park, Millennium Park in Chicago, Illinois. We talked about Chicago at the Navy Pier. There's this uh, park that has a lot of like sporting venues, things like that. Uh, Golden Gate Park in San Francisco. We talked about that in my San Francisco video recently. Grand Central Terminal, the train station in New York City, which another one to be like, that's the 
I mean, that's the third thing in New York is a train station. It's a cool train station, but I think those numbers, are they tourists or are they just people that are like, they're transiting through there because they're on the trains and so they get counted as attendees. Then we get into the Disney theme parks, uh, the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World, 20 million people. Lincoln Park, Chicago, uh, famous for, you know, Eminem songs and there's a band, Lincoln Park. 20 million. Then we go to Disneyland Resort, 18 million a year. Fanwell Hall, Boston, the Freedom Trail, 18 million. Balboa Park in San Diego, 13 million. A couple more Disney parks. Then we get the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, North Carolina and Tennessee at 12 million visitors per year. That is the number one visited national park in the USA. If you thought it was the Grand Canyon, you'd be wrong. The Grand Canyon is at the bottom of this list. Uh, then we go um, to Pier 39 and Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, which is a neat shopping mall on a pier that has a lot of seals and sea lions. Here we go, Venice Beach in California, 10 million people, uh, Pike Place Market in Seattle, the Golden Gate Bridge, the South Street Seaport in New York, the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan, and if you wonder what the, what the heck is the Mackinac Bridge, it's a suspension bridge that looks just like the San Francisco Bridge, um, though not not clearly worldwide famous, but it looks just like it, just painted a slightly different color and actually longer than the Golden Gate Bridge, the Navy Pier that we talked about, and finally rounding that out with the Grand Canyon at 5 million visitors annually. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, if you've got a question, drop it in the comments. Put a question mark after it if you're on the live stream. If you're watching the archive, well, do the same. Put your question down there. Put a question mark after it. I answer pretty much every question uh, in the comment section unless you're like, Chris, why was this video so lame? In that case, I, I don't feed the trolls. So those questions just go to, they go to the trash bin right away. Mm. Zachary Smith says, um, for first honorable mention, future birthplace of Captain Kirk in Riverside, Iowa. There we go, Zachary, first honorable mention. And uh, Scott, who's from that part of the world, uh, says uh, one tip about the uh, Mackinac Bridge, as I pronounced it, is actually pronounced the Mackinac Bridge. All right, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And see, it's not that famous because I actually, I looked at this list of things and I was like, what the heck is that bridge? It's on that list. That was the only thing I've, like, I'm like I, don't, I don't even know what that is. So um, thank you for that. Uh, Michael says, where is Din Tai Fung located in Vegas? It is in the Aria. So go check it out. My favorite Taiwanese restaurant there is. College Full of Love says, your videos are blessed. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tao Empire Kids is the Winchester Mystery House was snubbed from this list. Maybe if I went on to a few more numbers, it would. I think the Winchester Mystery House is super cool. Remy says, what's your favorite airport lounge in the U.S.? I like the Star Alliance Lounge at LAX in the International Terminal. That's my favorite lounge in the U.S. Um, they got great food, and I also like that they have an outdoor section so you can go and get some fresh air, too. Well, fresh airport air. Uh, Avi uh, seconds, the Golden Gate Park. Thank you for that. Raman asks if I've been to Dubai. Not yet. Blue Sky reminds everybody, please like. Thank you. Uh, Scott says the Mackinac Bridge connects the Upper Peninsula and the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. It's a cool bridge. But I like the Golden Gate Bridge a little bit better. All right. Thank you for that report, Scott. Yeah, and the other thing I... I'm telling you, I read this because I haven't been there, but I read that the Mackinac Bridge doesn't have a, like a sidewalk you can walk across, like you can only drive across it. Um, so I think that is like a plus one point for the Golden Gate Bridge that you can actually walk uh, across it. Danielle says the Union Station and Grand Central harken back to the golden age of passenger train travel. Yeah, before uh, Amtrak really took a complete nosedive. Those, tra those train stations are amazing and they're beautiful. And frankly, Los Angeles Union Station um, is a really beautiful train station too. I stayed in a hotel in St. Louis, Missouri, like a double tree there that's a converted train station. It's so sad. The trains don't run into the grand train station anymore. Instead, it's just a hotel, but it was a neat, neat hotel. Nelson says, hey, what's your favorite place to go in Vancouver? Our favorite attraction was the uh, Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. Rich says, Shouldn't Pearl Harbor be part of the Hawaii list? Rich, you know, the reason why I didn't include Pearl Harbor, Pearl Harbor's depressing to me. I mean, I, like, I think it's an important, significant cultural place, but it's also a depressing place. And um, that's, that's why it's not 
on my list. Just, it just reminds me of like the sadness in the world and um, I try not to make myself that sad. Uh, Melissa says, what's your favorite place to eat in New York City? I, there's a lot of great food in New York City and I would say, uh, you know, I like cheap eats. I really like the Halal Guys cart in New York City. Uh, I also like um, Pizza by the Slice from the random Pizza by the Slice places. I think like maybe Joe's or something is a super good Pizza by the Slice place that I like to eat at. I like the pastrami um, from the, you know, Jewish delis that are there. Like there, it's, it's pretty awesome. But those pastrami sandwiches, like you can like uh, easily, like two people can eat one of those. Theo says, have you been in any other cool Colorado locations besides Vail? I think Denver is a neat city. I also like Colorado Springs, just kind of an hour to the south of Denver. It's neat uh, to go to, in Colorado Springs, there's this little neighborhood called Manitou Springs that has like actual natural hot springs that just run. Some of them are like carbonated. Like if you bring a cup or glass, you can like put it there out of these like things and just drink it. Uh, and then it's also neat to go up to Pikes Peak, this really tall peak. You can take a train up there or road up there. So those are some of the neat places in Colorado. Momo says, did you do anything for the Lunar New Year? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, other than uh, other than just try to relax. Um, and Rich says, yes, Katz's Deli is a great place to eat in New York City. Stefan says, hey, I'm going to Seoul and Osaka and Kyoto in May. What are the must-sees over there? Hey, the great news for you, Stefan, is I got a whole video on Seoul, things to do. Um, check that out. I mean, their Imperial Palace is pretty neat. Uh, you can go see Gangnam, where like Gangnam style was filmed. There's a lot of great places to see. Uh, in Kyoto, go see the temples. Go see Nara, which is famous for feeding the deer <clears throat> uh, outside of Osaka and Kyoto. Brandon Seconds, Manitou Springs in Colorado, which is pretty neat. And there's a really neat pinball arcade there, too, that has these old uh, pinball arcade things. Kid Blue Creation says, are there any bucket list places in the USA that you want to visit? Uh, Niagara Falls is probably the number one on my list. I've not been to Niagara Falls yet. I also want to visit Maine. I haven't been up to the state of Maine to get, like, lobster rolls because Maine has such a short, um, like, tourist season, it seems like. I just, I never make it up there. Uh, Avi says, have you been to any good cheesesteak places in Philly? Yes. Can I remember the name? No. But I will tell you that the good Philly cheesesteak places are not the, not the super touristy, most popular ones. They're like, more like the local cheesesteak places. I feel like the ones that are super famous, the lines are just too long and they just churn out the sandwiches and they don't have to be good because they've got the, like the name and the notoriety and the, the lines to make it. Uh, Raman goes, says, what's the best time to visit Las Vegas, uh, spring or fall, uh, and skip the summer because it's too hot in the summer. So, uh, like March, April, May, great times to visit or, um, se September, October, I think are the great months to visit. Lars says the Pat's King of Steaks is the best cheese steak in Philly, hands down. Well, there you go. There's one vote from Lars. Alex says, Maine is beautiful. Look for my cousin's donut shop, Frosty. Sweet. Tony says, <clears throat> what's to see in Maryland? I think Baltimore is a really neat city in Maryland. There's a cool aquarium there. The Inner Harbor is pretty neat in Maryland. Um, yeah, and then like closer to D.C., the National Harbor, which uh, has like the Gaylord Hotel. It's kind of a neat like little touristy enclave too. There's a MGM casino that's there. Uh, and <laughs> uh, Walter, uh, Mark has joined in, says uh, the Vegas summer equals the surface of the sun. It is, it's boil, like your skin starts to boil. And by the way, Mark, thanks for joining in. Super great to see you. Uh, what's my favorite place to eat in Vegas? You know, like the place I eat the most in Vegas is the Earl of Sandwich at Planet Hollywood because it's cheap and it's fast. On a recent trip, we ate at the buffet at Caesar's Palace, the Bacchanal buffet. I think that probably is my favorite buffet right now. You pay for it, the price is expensive, but it was pretty tasty. Uh, but then if you're like, Chris, what's your favorite food court? I really like the Asian food at Resorts World in particular. I like the stall in there called Goggle Man and they specialize in um, uh, Malaysian Singaporean style uh, noodles, which are really good. So there you go. Like boil that down to like a little stall. <laughs> Mark says, I've eaten at that Earl of Sandwich. You can't go wrong with that Earl of Sandwich. I love the Earl's Club. And I also love their holiday turkey sandwich, which is a sandwich that has 
turkey stuffing uh, cranberry sauce, uh, and it's just, it's really good. And you're like, it's Thanksgiving all year round, all year round. Brooklyn Joe doesn't like Earl of Sandwich. That's okay, Brooklyn Joe. You're just off my, my Christmas list. No Christmas gifts for you. All right, <clears throat> uh, Carlos says, is it a goggle man or goggle mon? Yeah, how's it, how's it pronounced? Maybe it's pronounced that way, but you spelled it right there at the beginning. Uh, Michael says, my favorite cheap eat is Eat and Park. I have never been to Eat and Park. Ramel says, do you know my older brother got married in Las Vegas? Ramel, I did not know that, but thank you for sharing that uh, with me. Harry says, would you recommend going to Disney or Universal Studios in California? Um, would I recommend going to Disney or Universal Studios in California? Yes, to both. Uh, they're both great parks. Depends what you like. Do you like movie stuff? Go to Universal. Do you like Mickey? Then go to Disney. By the way, oh my Daniel, thank you for your kind of little yellow lemon sticker in the chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, Spidey agrees. The holiday sandwich at Earl's Sandwich is on fire. It is on fire. Uh, <clears throat> Ryan says Yellowstone or Yosemite. You know, I'm pro since we don't like. We're kind of wimps when it comes to parks. We like to like stay in hotels and we like to do like couple hour hikes and that's it. We don't like to camp. We don't like to go on day long hikes. So I would probably not be the best expert to ask between Yellowstone and Yosemite, just not having experienced it maybe as much as real park enthusiasts have. Zachary says, when in Taiwan, spicy or regular hot pot? mild spicy hot pot. I like a little bit of spice in my hot pot, but I don't like it to be blow you away. Uh, there's a Taiwanese hot pot chain here in California, Boiling Point, that we like, and I like it with a little bit of spice in it. Uh, Ramen Goated says, are San Diego beaches perfect in the summer? I think so. Uh, the water could be a little bit warmer, but they are pretty nice to go to. Uh, Jose says, hello, Chris from Mexico. Hola, Jose. Um, <laughs> Emmett says, my favorite cheap eat are the samples at Costco. That's a great place to eat. Melissa says, I highly recommend the Neon Museum in Vegas. Must see. We visited the Neon Museum for the first time on our last trip. We love the two. Great place to take a lot of super good pictures. Uh, Tyler says, California, your favorite state. I guess because I live in California, then yes, it probably is. Um, Jason says the best place to stay in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. We've been to Cabo San Lucas once. We stayed at the Hilton that was there. It was nice. Uh, I would say stay out of the touristy downtown area and stay in one of the hotels that are like between San Jose del Cabo and Cabo San Lucas that are like right along the beach. Definitely you want a beachfront hotel if you're in Cabo San Lucas. Uh, Samira says, when are you coming to Hong Kong? Uh, I don't know. Um, but our next trip is going to, our next big trip is going to be uh, Singapore, Taiwan, and Japan. That's what we're doing on our next big trip uh, to coincide with the cherry blossoms in Japan. Figure while we're out there, we'll kind of, kind of hit a few places. Um, our ex says, where can I find authentic Nicaraguan food? I have no idea, honestly. Um, I don't think Nicaraguan food, I don't think is a, big cuisine in SoCal. But if there's somebody else that like knows it, and I know, uh, you know, Paint Killer says he's a downtown LA ex tour guide. So Paint Killer, if you got something uh, to help out a fellow explorer, let him know. Uh, Avi says, go to the Tonga Room and Hurricane Bar in the basement of the Fairmont in San Francisco. It's an amazing tiki bar. I will keep that in mind. Junie says, do you like all inclusive resorts? I don't, uh, just because I don't want to eat all the same food, all the same place, all the time. I like the food out and about. I like to experience the local food. We like to go out and explore. We don't like to just be trapped in a resort. So we generally don't do the all-inclusive resorts. Remy says, what do you think of cruises? Oh, see, girl gets seasick. Uh, so we don't love cruises. But, you know, we've heard a lot of great things about Disney cruises. And so we're like, maybe we'll do a Disney cruise. If Disney invited us on a cruise, we would definitely go on a Disney cruise. So if anybody from Disney Cruise Line is watching and you'd like a Spunky Princess video, our daughter, if you'd like a video of her going around the cruise ship, seeing how much she enjoys it, let us know. You know how to contact me. All right. Uh, Harry says, do you have any videos about the M Resort in Las Vegas? Not yet. Uh, Sheepdog says, what cheap hotel brands are clean enough? Um, yeah, I don't stay in a lot of like the super cheap hotel brands, but you know, and by super cheap, I mean like there's like Motel 6 and Super 8. 
Um, I've stayed in some Best Westerns recently. <laughs> uh, they're okay. Uh, they were clean, I guess. Um, they weren't great, but they were clean. So they got that going for them. Uh, I would say I stay in a lot of Marriott's, Hilton's, Hyatt's affiliated in the Marriott portfolio, you know, Spring Hill Suites, Fairfield Inn, some of their lower end ones that I think they do a good job cleaning in the Hyatt portfolio, Hyatt Place, uh, in the Hilton chain, uh, you know, Hampton Inn or Homewood Suites, uh, I usually find are pretty solid. Uh, and Carlos says, I work at Disney Cruise, sending you a DM now. All right, Carlos, that sounds good. You know, maybe even better, send me an email uh, to... Uh, to write right here. Send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. I look forward to it. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it's time for the giveaway. And in this video, I mentioned uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Oh, by the way, I should say, why am I, what am I, what am I giving away? Aha, uh -huh. I'm giving away a Yellow Productions crew shirt. Uh, to you if you answer this question correctly and uh, I'll ship it to you anywhere in the world. All right, so my question is, I mentioned the Golden Gate Bridge, but I mentioned that there's another bridge in the U.S. that's like looks just like it, except it's bigger. What is the name of that bridge? And if you get that correct, then you win a, uh, <laughs> you win the uh, T-shirt and you got to spell it correctly. That's the other, that's the other problem. All right. And now we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, congratulations to, duk, 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 duk. hold on, I need to, I need to, I'm making sure we get the correct one. Mm -mm 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 -mm. There are a lot of answers and there are some that are misspelled, but the first correctly spelled answer da, 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 on my screen checking the letters mac and neck bridge road geek zero nine congratulations you win the yellow productions crew shirt send me an email to that one i flashed up on the screen earlier you'll find it in the description below uh and if you all didn't win one but you want to get one well you can head over to the yellow productions shop and pick one up uh, and if you're wondering when the next live stream is, probably next week, you can head over to the Yellow Productions update, update.yellow-productions.com, subscribe to my mailing list. I will email you and let you know when the next live stream is. Now, what were the uh, second and third place winners? Well, Zachary, uh, sorry, you didn't quite spell it right. And Melissa, you were close. And I know you said you can't spell, but uh, spelling counts in this case, so... Uh, congratulations to all y'all. Well, fellow explorers, super great hanging out with y'all today. I really enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that like button because it really helps me out a lot. And as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to see you in the next video.